What is good? It's your host, Mikey T, the movie star, and we're back for episode four of the hip hop panel. I'm I'm right. It's hip hop four, right, you guys? It's episode four. Yeah. Absolutely. No, this is the panel where they we smoke the most gas, and uh, you know, Twiz holds it down with the vape, of course. Uh, yes, <laughs> let's get it rocking, though, guys. There's a lot of shit popping in hip hop since we had last been on the show. I mean, we've got an upcoming versus with the Three Six Mafia uh, going against Bone Thugs and Harmony. Apparently, I mean. You know, uh, just a whole bunch of shit I've been working on. My Hollow the Don interview, uh, my interview with Black De Niro, Saigon. That's what I've been having going on. Uh, what's been going on with you, Rosewood? Hey, man. Basically working. Studio. making Getting the studio up and running. Really just being in there for about almost a month now. Not even a month. Everything up and running good. So just perfecting everything. You know, got the Members Only Monday showcase going on. Tonight is going to be Enes hosting it and having a listening party also. You know, shout out my guy, Ace the Chemist, my partner. Members Only Mondays is a showcase for all up-and-coming artists in the tri-state. Only $20 for you to get on and perform. You know, that's really nothing. And we have all the a rs all the promo people, all the managers in the building. So if you need to network, it's a good network experience. And you get to perform and practice your craft. Just for $20 to step on the stage or whatever like that. You know, first come, first serve, because there's always a lot of people. Like I said, tonight we're going to have Enes hosting it, and he having a listening party with it. My man Easter Kim is shooting a video there tonight. You know, so there's always a lot of stuff going on on the music side of things, you know, on the arts period. You know, just working in the city, you know, really working on the marijuana laws, you know, trying to get this thing all the way legal in the city. You know, doing a lot of community service to, you know, try to stop the violence in the city. So we just work in our spell entertainment, man. You know what it is, holding it down, Mikey T, and holding right. it down for the guys that's be Twiz and Bond Simmons. All right, man, that's what's up. That's productive Rosewood, you know, you know uh, artist showcase. Uh, I know a lot about the 1122 uh, Dutch from Major Figures had put me on to that probably about a year ago, maybe even pre-pandemic. But um, mm -hmm. Twiz, let me throw it over to you, bro, because we are talking about film today. We're going to be talking about the Stars series BMF. And, you know, Twiz, sure. is a, Twiz is a director, a producer, and a writer himself. So, Twiz, what's been popping with you as of late, man? Oh, man, just grinding, man. Y'all know this SB Twiz, man. Still, you know, I'm in the middle of trying to get this next movie rolling. I want it to be 150%, you know what I mean? So... Y'all interested in being a part of it, cameramen, whatever, you know what I mean? Just DM me, IG underscore twiz215. You know, other than that, sub to the YouTube channel, Life with the Philly Fan. I just dropped a part one of the interview with, with Omar Gunn, so check that out. If y'all didn't get a chance to check that out, you know what I mean? So other than that, man, I'm on here with the family, man. Report card radio, La Familia, man. Mikey T, the movie star. Honorable Er, Bond Simmons in the building. We about to All give right. y'all a lit panel tonight as usual. And let me check yeah. in with Bond Simmons, man. Got the TNR gear. Some of that's on its yeah. way to Philly, as you were just telling us before we jumped on the air. But, man, we got some shit to talk about today. But, Bonds, what's been good with you, G's? Uh, basically, it's been, it's been the TNR where, man, I've been, you know, um, I've been promoting, you know, still promoting a local legend. I dropped that in August, and I've been really trying to kick off this merch, man. I, these sweatsuits and stuff. So I've been just dealing with orders and trying to, you know, s sketch out promotional tactics and, you know, dealing with manufacturers and stuff like that. But, you know, Teach and Reveal, Truth and Reality, Tumble and Rise, Torch and Roll. We're trying to just expand, man, and, and, and you know, so. I like that. I like that, Bonds. You seem like you got some things popping. Everybody knows local legends available right now, um, all, all different streaming apps. But today we're going to talk about a series that has come and it really impacted a lot of people. You can tell that BMF impacted a lot of people just because of the fact that it started out with about 369,000 viewers. And by the end of the series, it had rose up to about a half a million viewers. You know, it really gained a lot of positive word of mouth throughout the time that it, you know, came into play from the end of September to the end of November. 
And today we're going to give a review of all things surrounding BMF from our, our favorite scenes, our favorite storylines, the, the characters that impacted us the most. But um, to get things started, I'm going to send it around the panel, and we're going to talk about our favorite moment from the series. You know, something that raised the hair on your arms. You know what I mean? Something that gave you goosebumps. You know, watching this series, it was like real-life depiction. It was different than some of the other stuff that we've watched because we know that this series actually involved real characters and happenings. You know, that, you know, I was reading on several different websites, some of the happenings have been dramatized or, you know, they've yeah. given a little bit of comic relief to uh, take some of the edge off of it. But mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about our favorite moment from the series, uh, Bonds. Let's start it out with you, bro. Uh, I would say the, the, the shocking thing for me, the one had me thinking the most probably was when when he told, when T told Meech he was out, he was going to leave. You know what I'm saying? And then Meech was like, you know what I mean? It was crazy. It was like in front of the building. He was like, yo, I'm out after this. He's like, yo, what about the connect? You're like, I don't care about nothing. And, and I mean, he was like, you just going to leave your brother? Like, like mm -hmm. he was really like, I mean, like, I need you. So it was, it was like, it was like a lot of mixed feelings. Cause like, damn, yeah, brother trying to get straight. Like you don't want him to get straight. But like, it's like, damn, I know you want your brother with you, but. You got to look at the risk that you taking every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why well, want your brother to take that risk? But, you know what I'm saying? Then again, you need your brother with you. So it's like, if that was a a real, you know? Yeah, because Meech actually was looking at T and he was like, oh, you want to start the uh, car company? That could actually yeah. be good for us in the long run. Right, right Fonz? But yeah, you see... Like it, that was the only thing that that slowed me down. Like everything else that everybody else would talk to me, he was like, it was like nothing else would stop him in his tracks. But when he heard that from T, it was like that stopped him in his tracks and and got his full attention and nothing else mattered. That was the first time you see that too. Like you know what I mean? So that was like crazy. Like yep, a little belt. And that's actually where the series was sort of left. You know, I think that was a good uh, uh, cliffhanger to leave the yeah. series. It's like, all right, so what's T going to do now? Uh, yeah. How is Meech going to continue expanding the brand? Um, Rosewood, I'm passing it over to you, my guy. Uh, favorite moment from the series? Mm. Now, actually, I got a few favorite moments. That's the, that's how I know it's a real good series right here. <laughs> wow. that's like, you know, I got a few of them. Facts. You know, one of the you know one of the moments that you know really that I that stuck out stuck out to me and that you know was kind of shocking was when Lamar was getting his revenge and he tried to kidnap Meek's little sister to stab the stab the her little boyfriend. You know, yeah, just oh, yeah. Him, that's how they built it up where she snuck him in the house and then they set the young boy and then now Meech is in this Lamar runs up on her. Young boy try to protect her. Lamar give it to him. Young boy check. So it was like, dang. I was like, whoa. Like, oh, this is John Real in the field. Like, they not holding back any punches with this. That and when um, when uh, the chick on his squad, when, when she killed the cop. You know, when he fighting with Meech. Yep. And she Von Bryant's him. partner. Yeah. And she hit him. I'm like, whoa. That spent everything because Nana's like, this was the person that was really piecing things together, you know, kind of, sort of. Now he's out of it, but they're still, you know, looking at the other cop, his partner, like, no, nah, we don't trust you. You know, so those two, those, those, it's more parts, but those two right there, I like that. You yeah. Know? And when Cato actually took that detective out, it, yeah, it, it, for a moment, it actually showed how much loyalty she had and you would have thought that would have made Meech really take to her. But within an, another couple episodes, you know, what happened is what happened. And uh, Twiz, man, those were some good moments from Rosewood. Good moment from Bonds as well. Twiz, yeah. what were your moments from this show that really grabbed you? My, my biggest moments, man, from the, from the whole season, season one, I'm going to have to go straight to the finale. And this was like a major, major chess move that was played by Meech. And I'm talking about when Meech killed Lamar and Meech homie was pretty much had the pressure on him to 
till a girl that he really started getting feelings for. Right. You know what I mean? It was so shocking, like, whoa, like, all right, so he got Lamar. It's like, damn, they got him already. He just seemed like he was going to be a character that if later on down the line, they probably would have got him. I, I wouldn't have thought that they would have got him in season one like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then on top of that, you see his homie pointing the gun to her, and she like, I love you. He like, I love you too. And he did it, and you can see the pain, him going through mixed emotions and stuff like that. And it was like, he was upset with Meech, but Meech like, man, we family. But, you know, I feel like it, it was definitely a big reason behind it. Because like you said, you know, Kato showed her loyalty, but she also had stuff under her sleeve a little. You know what I mean? Like, she would maneuver. She yeah, would maneuver. She would of the fence. She exactly. Like, Even when she was laying down. Exactly. Even when she was laying down with the guy, you would see her look and do a certain look like, I got her. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah. That was just shocking to me how that whole scene played out. You know, I had a couple of favorite moments from the series as well. You know, uh, I, I liked when Meech was going to get the kids some soda. You know, they were like, yo, Meech. And Curly was uh, Curly, little Curly. And he was like, hey, Meech, can you, uh, can you go get us a 40? And he's like, man, I'm going to get you all some pop. You know, and then he walks back. He walks into the uh, – he walks into the shop and he comes back out and he's like, yo, I got some Fagos for y'all. And then he just drops the soda because Lamar is standing there with a trench coat and a shotgun pointed at him. But then a couple guys came out. I'm not sure if it was uh, just his hired protection or at yeah. that point, if he had mm. come in contact with 12th street, because you mm. know, 12th street and the 50 boys sort of got a understanding after a while. But yeah, yeah that was yeah. one of my top moments. Uh, I'll speak oh. more about that later. What's up, Bones? No, I was about to say, I was about to just throw one more in there when when um when Meach tried to come in the connect crib and sh and he was like, like he thought he was going, he already know she already said, I'm not fucking with I'm you. I'm not meeting you. And he spins over there like, listen, this is my money. He thought he was really she backed out. I'm like, I said, get the fuck out of here. Like for I blow your fuck. <laughs> know what I mean, he had to really walk out like, all right, like fuck it, like. Yep. Like, yeah, just stay in the car, man. Right. That was another yeah. important point to the story because Meech, Meech, when uh, he and T broke apart, T, he was like, "Yo, what about, what about, uh, what about the dealer?" And he was like, "Man, you're on your own." He's yeah. like, "Go find your own connect." Cause she liked T too. Cause mm -hmm. even after that, when he when Meech went to the car, T was like, "Man, I don't give a fuck about that. He right though, but let's do what we doing." She don't even carry T like that. Like she respects his. His maturity, but mm -hmm. I, she also likes him. I think. Yeah, she like a, like a young boy. Like she like a cool yeah. girl. Like oh, all right, yeah. this is a little young she, boy I like or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. She got no man in nothing too. She probably she thirsty. No, but I think I I think that she like that he's not loud. He's not flashy. He's Back. calm. He don't draw attention. Meech was flashy. He yeah. talks a lot. You know what I mean? She yeah, like yeah. dealing with low key people. She well, had to um, keep her. One thing she didn't like was how they kind of fumbled the ball. You know, at first they were asking for extensions right. and then they were asking for fronts. You know, like right. these aren't things that you're going to do when you're dealing with a new connect. And T kind of understood that. But, you know, Meech, Meech was a, a hustler. He was a gambler. You know what I mean? He, he was a gambler when it came to this shit. You got to It's, you know, you bet big. The risk is big, but the reward is even greater. Yeah, exactly. You're already out here. So yeah, might as well take might as well take further risk, yeah. Rosewood <laughs> um hit on another one of my favorite moments, uh, when Meech's little sister's boyfriend actually got killed by Lamar. That was one of the most, you know, crazy moments. And uh another one when Pat, you know, all the conversations with Pat and Meech, you know, when right. Pat actually picked Meech up in the whip. Right. That was covered with all the, you know, it was covered with all the plastic. And it yeah, was, you know, one. you know what I mean? It was, I thought it was over. I was like, oh, he's shooting Meech right now. You know what I'm saying? I knew Meech wasn't obviously going to die, but I was like, yo, he's about to yeah. get shot. Maybe it's going to be a chase scene. But yeah, there was a lot from the eight episodes that we saw. You know what I mean? Um, now let's break it down a little bit. The start of the show. I want to break out, break down how the first show came together. 
In 2019, it was revealed that 50 Cent had begun developing a series about the Black Mafia family. And in April of 2020, stars actually greenlit the series. In May of 2020, just a month later, Terry Flannery, uh, Southwest T, was released. And the series premiere came just over a year after that in September of 2021. So I want to get into our favorite storylines. I want to get into our favorite storylines. Also, I wanted to mention after the first episode of BMF premiered, uh, stars greenlit the whole second series, uh, uh, the second Andy. season. Yeah, Andy. the second Andy. season is in the bag. Of course, yeah, they it's a no-brainer. This is right, facts. They gave him five seasons before they even showed one episode. <laughs> yep. Well, facts. I mean, you know, the ratings, as we said, as I said earlier, the ratings went up from like 370,000 all the way up to uh, half a million. So it's showing that some of the people that are interested in the other shows like Power and Power Book 2 are actually interested in, you know, BMF. But let's talk about some of our favorite storylines from the show. Um, One of my favorite storylines was uh, Big Meech and T's mom and dad, how they couldn't even afford the housing that they were living in. Even though Big Meech's dad was working a full-time job, their house still ended up going into foreclosure. And, you know, Meech ended up wanting to pay for the house. He ended up paying for the house with his own money, which his dad was like, he, his dad was like embarrassed about. His dad was embarrassed and upset. And at this point, they didn't really know if T was dealing with Meech. This was one of my favorite concepts, just the whole fam- family lifestyle that was going on. You know what I mean? Meech getting kicked out of the house, the mom eventually finding all those bricks when Meech had snuck into the crib. Uh, Twiz, what was your favorite storyline from the series? That was a great storyline that you said right there. You know, what, what they're going through with the family and everything, just period, with, where the mother got to choose, where the father is putting pressure on them. But I'm, for another storyline, I'll have to put out um, – Meech relationship with like the dirty cop, you know what I mean? One one minute he's on his side, the next minute he's ready to turn him in to cover his behind. And um, as of now, he on bench duty, desk duty. So it's like he has like a grudge on his shoulder. So I feel like he's going to be, he got so much built up. I, I'm anxious to see what's going to happen in the future. Yep, definitely. Uh, Detective Bryant seems like, he wants mm-hmm. to put down some of those people now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he can get off desk duty, I guess, Twiz. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. wants to bust Pat or, you know, he he, threw, he gave Meech back his money. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, yeah, that whole thing with the dirty cops is definitely one of the most interesting factors, especially how, um, you know, uh, Bryant hand-delivered the dude to Meech who Meech had thought killed his brother, the other drug dealer. J-Mo. Yeah, j Yep, j You know, and then they, it was B. Mickey, B. Mickey shot j Like, that was shocking to me because it's yeah. like, wow, B. Mickey is probably the craziest of the three. Bonds, would you agree with that? And what was your favorite storyline? B. Mickey is definitely loyal to the soil. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, he showed that when he when he killed the girl. But um, yeah, I guess like you said, the kind of the family dynamic, but just the approach that they taking with Meech, like you know what I'm saying, like how he's kind of like black sheep and like you know what I'm saying, they blaming him for for Terry, which is like it's crazy. I was arguing with my girl about the, with my wife about that, like damn. So I'm like, why they blame him for everything? Like, you know what I mean? But, you know, I guess, you know, he's going to follow, you know what I mean, the big brother. You know what I'm saying? Whatever he's doing. So being that he's choosing that, you know what I mean? They blaming him for the – but that that's kind of – you know, that just makes me a little bit uneasy, like, watching that. Like, because I feel like, you know, good. if 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 you're going to fight, fight for both of them. You know what I'm saying? And, and you may have a better chance of fighting for both of them instead of trying to separate them with a – with the fight, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't know, but that's one of them. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, let's get Rosewood's take. 
I know Rosewood's probably got a few storylines that grabbed him from the series. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, actually, um, it's definitely two. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, the whole thing with Lamar. You know, how they introduced Lamar, you know, how they show his life, what's going on in his world, you know, his motivations for the things that he's doing, you know, that storyline. Banging Lamar. his baby mama. Yeah, you know, be, you know, being an antagonist of the, you know, of the, of the first season, really, like that. And like Twitter said, I thought he was going to be in it, you know, longer. You know, because in real life, you know, they changed the story around because Lamar didn't die, you know, yeah. in real life. So, and actually, uh, he shoots Meech. So, they changed it around, and I thought he was going to be there longer, but I still like how they built that storyline of Lamar. And now the new storyline that they had would be Mickey, you know, even with them having the gun. You know, right, that right there. That's a crazy cliffhanger in itself now. I'm definitely waiting for season two with that storyline. So yeah. how this is going to play out with B. Mickey, you know, because like Bond said, he's loyal to the soil. Nah, that's crazy. Yeah, I forgot about that, bro. Yep. Right? I forgot I about Brian that. got Mickey in the hot seat right in now the seat because right now. the ballistics came back on J. Mo's murder. And Man, that gun God. that Meech told him to get rid of I believe it was uh, Meech who told him to get rid of it. He's like, yo, you got rid of that, right? And he's like, oh, of course. I'm not stupid. But that is a weapon. You know how all these rappers, they be making songs about their gun and shit like that. He, like, has, like, some sort of a personal infatuation with this weapon that he doesn't want to part with it, Twiz. Yeah, that's a fact. You just see how he was when he was cleaning it and everything and just looking at it. <laughs> Thanks, Twiz. <laughs> yeah, he bugging. He's gonna be separated from that weapon. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, see, that's that I'm waiting for that storyline now. So, guys, let's go into our favorite characters from the show, man. There was a lot of different, you know, uh rappers actually were on the show. You had Snoop Dogg playing the Reverend, who I think mm -hmm. was accepting uh he was accepting uh bribes from all different types of people or charitable donations. To the Chats cause, the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, let's talk about some of our favorite characters from the show. I'm going to be honest, y'all. I think my favorite character has to be B. Mickey because of how conflicted he is throughout the whole entire series. You know, from apparently when you're within a clique like this, if there's a chick member of the group, you can't necessarily be fraternizing with her. You know what I mean? This was his first love. As he told Meech, he's like, that's why it was so messed up for him being his first love. And we saw what ended up happening at the end of the series with her getting taken out by him. Meech handled Lamar. And then you would think, oh, Kato's going to get to run free. But nah, B. Mickey was right there on Kato's ass. And right before he did the deed, he, he said something that I think is going to be remembered for years to come in history, uh, you know, he said, I love you too, boo. And then he took that final shot, man. That was classic right there, man. Like that really gave, that really hit me with a jolt to end the series like that. But then even further, like Rosewood said, when they got him in that room and they were like, listen, we have all the information on you. You're either going away because like I said, Detective Bryant needs this. He needs to put B. Mickey away for that homicide, you know, to get off from the desk duty. He said, you either be my guy, my snitch now against Meech, or I'm taking you down. So I'm going to say my favorite character from the series was actually B. Mickey. Um, Rosewood, who do you got as your favorite character? My favorite character from the series, believe it or not, is Lamar. That's my favorite character, Lamar. You know, and shout out to the actor that plays Lamar, because he did one yeah. hell of a job, man. You know, it, he really say he embodied, you know, the character, you know, of um, Mar Lathan, you know, but that's the way, you know, he was, he came and took over 12th Street, you know, how he's putting in work, even after, like, when he going to war with me, she's like, all right, I'm a one-man army, I can't be stopped, you know, so it was like, it's, he got classic lines, you know, 
he always came with some slick talk with the violence, you know. So, you know, Lamar is my favorite character, man. You know, I wish he was, you know. And, yeah, I wish he didn't get killed off in the first season, maybe disappear and come back or something like that. But, yeah, that was my favorite character right there, Lamar. And I hope I'm not butchering his name, but he is a British actor from London named Eric Kofi Abrifa. Um, he's uh, uh, He actually has a role as Mark Bailey in the Netflix series The One, and but now he's obviously going to be known as Lamar from BMF. He did it so well. And Rosewood, something I noticed from watching the Sopranos series is they usually alternate these uh, antagonists every series they'll have a new, you know, antagonist to deal with, a new villain, you know what I mean, right. for Meech and T to deal with. But we're going to have to see what happens with T going into the next, you know, s season. Maybe he's going to be trying to go legit. Maybe he does go legit for a certain part of his life. Um, Twiz, who do you got as your favorite character in the BMF series? Meech is my favorite character. You know, not just because it's based upon BMF and that he's obviously like the head person, but if you think about it, man, he's still young and it takes a lot to be in a person of his position and to make decisions for everybody. Like, he got every, everybody in his team, they got positions to play. You know what I mean? And, and he thinks strategically through everything. Even though he was going around asking certain people questions, it's like he's really, like, you know, testing their brain. He had talked to a person and know they're lying and won't say it to him. You know what I mean? And, and like, sit back and just think and put all that information together. So I think he's he just very strategic, man. And, and what make it crazier is it was it's really true. That's how he was. That's how, you know, they were able to become that big. Obviously, he had his brother, too, but Meech was always two feet in. You know what I mean? So, Meech's definitely my favorite character on there. Yeah, and like T said, what does BMF stand for? Big Meech Flannery? You know what I mean? <laughs> that was just too funny when he said that to him. I was like, because I had never thought about that before. I was like, oh, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I'm not conceited. <laughs> he said, don't yeah. answer that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, from going from uh, being the 50 boys, you know what I mean, to the new name of BMF, Black Mafia Family, I think that was a substantial change. And it probably yeah. even impacted what happened at the end of the first series with them taking out Cato. If I learned anything from The Sopranos, you cannot have a rat in your click and if that's what bmf was trying to do would be a black mafia family is you know be that from like what the italians were doing then they couldn't have a rat in their community of bonds so we got b mickey we got lamar and we got meech from twiz who was your favorite character from the series i was thinking the whole time too and I would have to say probably Meech, man, but for a slightly different reason because just his his vision, you know what I'm saying? Like the young Meech got a vision that nobody else around him, like it's certain things you can see at his young age that there's certain things that he has to learn and incorporate in his leadership in order to, you know what I'm saying? get everybody on the same page, which he initially did, you know what I'm saying? I mean, what he eventually did. But I don't know. I guess, like, he just has the vision for BMF, like, you know what I'm saying, of of how – and he just got the, the ultimate confidence in that drive, bro, like a lot of people don't have, you know what I'm saying? So I think I admire that the most. So that's probably – he's my favorite character. Yeah, Bonds, there were other characters, like I had said, from the hip-hop community that joined in. You had Snoop Dogg. You had Snoop Dogg come in as the Reverend. Eminem as White Boy Rick. Um, did yeah. either of those uh, – I mean, Eminem's, no, was really, Eminem's was really brief. I could say I could say T, man. You know what I'm saying? Really? 
You know what I mean? To pick my own. Nobody picked T, right? Right. Well, I can say T, man, because, you know what I mean? T is, he has the, he has the ability, you know what I'm saying, to grind with Meech, but he still want more too. So, like, he he's he's down to, you know what I mean, go all the way and got, that's why, you know what I mean? Meech can be so confident and him feeling like T is walking away is kind of, shattering is going to shatter his confidence and making him real scared. You know what I mean? So just to, to know that, you know, T has to the ability and the, the, the nuts basically to do both. Like, you know what I'm saying? To survive in both worlds. So that's, that's an admirable trait. You know what I'm saying? And seeing that in the young man, you know, you, you kind of, you kind of intrigued like where he going to end up. Cause you know, it's going to be, he going, you know, he going to wind up on top wherever, you know what I mean? Whether you do go corporate or you stay in the streets. But, you know, having that influence and being in that situation and that environment, you know what I mean? It's just making you direct your talents to that. So he's 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 very interesting, like, you know what I mean? And, and even see how he played it in real life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Wasn't out flashy. He wasn't really down with the BMF. He was BMF by blood, but he wasn't out with them dudes. And you know, uh, and also, uh, I wanted to point out that uh, Southwest T was played by this actor named Da Vinci, who's been- Nah, I like him. Yeah, he's dope. I like him. And so Terry Flannery was actually released from prison- you know, All American, too. In 2020. He was released in May of 2020, and he actually gave his thoughts on Da Vinci playing him. He said, I would like to humbly thank everyone worldwide for their support. Season two has already been confirmed. I personally desire to thank you at Da Vinci for doing such a great job in the portrayal of my character. It is very important that we all support one another and continue to grow together. And I was watching an interview with Da Vinci and he was saying how, how ideal it was to work with Lil Meech because he was able to pick Lil Meech's brain a little bit about things that were going on, about you know different advice he could give him. So, these two are really a great combination, Da Vinci uh-huh. and Meech. Yeah. You know, um, I want to say that as well. Um, yeah. I watched him in the All American show, The Kid Da Vinci. Oh, he was in that too? Yeah, it's dope. Yeah, he in that All American show. It's fire too. I'll, I'll be watching it. I think that's HBO, I think. Yeah, so, um, I think so. Mm-hmm. so next I want to get into Big Meech making some comments about the show. Uh, when the first few episodes had premiered, a text message or a, a message from jail had been posted online where Big Meech was actually speaking on the show, speaking on 50 Cent, and it was to his son. And this is what he said. He said, keep in touch so we can talk about the third and fourth episode and whatever you out there doing. All positive vibes. I really love 50 for helping us make all this happen for us. It's like he's the only one to sincerely come through and put us on the 100% legitimate successful path. And he never owed us shit, but gave us everything. When, when almost all the sports and entertainers I've known most of my life never spoke up or helped us get, get on the path to legitimacy. What 50 has done for us to me is priceless. And there's nothing we, meaning you and I, won't do for him ever if needed. I love you, son, with all my heart for life, for death, for with all my heart for life and death. Your dad, the real Big Meech, BMF immortal. So Big Meech is really in support of everything that is being done right now. And I was watching another interview with Little Meech where he said that Big Meech's spirits are so heightened right now because of the positive manner that the story is being told in. Uh huh. Um. So, uh-huh. uh, Rosewood, what do you think about this, man? Uh, the fact that Big Meech is so, you know, in tune with what's going on, uh, the potential of, you know, him just involving himself more with the BMF series. Yeah, first and foremost, free Big Meech. And it gets to show people, you know, a lot of people that don't know the story, a lot of people, you know, are just finding out. It shows you what type of honorable guy Meech is. And it can show you how he was back then, you know, when he was getting all the money. He was still humble. He was still honorable. You know, he st- always looked Definitely up. Definitely was. Back then. 
that was the, that was the thing. It was like the next man always is everybody's equal around here or whatever. Like we're okay. all get it. Like you know, it's just a code of conduct. And for him to say like you know all the sports people entertainers that I knew when I was out there getting it for them not to do nothing at all. You know, like he said, fifty don't owe us nothing, and he really came and did it. Not like that's to do it and say, I'm going to put this story out here and benefit off of it. No, he said, I'm going to put it out because nobody knows their story. And this is a part of hip hop. You know, this is a part of hip hop. This is a part of the hood. This is a story that needs to be worldwide told, you know. So for 50 to do that, it's honorable too, you know. And that just shows right. you hood dudes linking up on the positive things and really showing you something positive out of the darkness when he was back then, you know? So I just look at 50 Cent saluting another hood dude that was really getting it or whatever, but that's in a bad situation, but also coming from the same era. So while 50 Cent's running around, he gets his first deal, Meech is running around doing his thing. So 50 Cent, you know, had to, he's seen it with his own two eyes. So I think it's definitely, you know, realizing that these are hood stories that got to be out there. And if somebody like 50 Cent ain't do it, nobody would have did it. You know, Little Meech said that his dad called him and wanted him to fly to ATL to meet 50 Cent for a casting opportunity. You know, Meech mm -hmm. was making music before this. But Twiz, what do you think of him really shining when it's come to acting, man? You know, 50 had said that he... Uh, set up acting classes for him and a lot of other rappers or you know thug turned actors might have just you know thought this was boring thought there were more interesting things to do but what do you make of Lil Meech actually taking it serious and even doing those acting classes I think it was great and it was genius for him to because you know they have like rehearsals so obviously 50 was like you got it you just need to get you know a little touched up more you need you need a little more, you know what I mean? A little more molding. And Lil Meech is doing such a great job. Like, you know, you, you would have thought that that really was Meech. I mean, that's, that's he was, sad. you know, he's he's executing that role to the fullest, man. Exactly. So it's definitely, definitely, definitely a good one. And um, Bonds, I want to ask you, man, do you think that Lil Meech will get other roles as the BMF series continues to, you know, unroll? Yeah, he already got another role too. He just got a role in some um some little joint. I forgot what it is too, but he just got another role already. He he he, he gonna be in something else already. And he's doing a great job. Yeah, 50 sent him sent him to California for some um acting lessons, man. And yeah. it did good. He's doing excellent, bro. Yeah. He's doing excellent, bro. That's what's yeah, up, man. man. You know, I was a little shocked that it was eight episodes for the series, but I see a lot yeah, of I see a lot of series that are actually doing that. You know, another series, uh, I know what you did last summer, uh, Chucky. Both of these, um, you know what I mean. Both of these uh, shows have only had seven or eight episodes. You know what I mean. So it's not different to what's actually coming on television now. Yeah. I look forward to seeing what's happening uh, in the next series uh, in the next season. As I said, stars picked them up after the debut episode, and they've only risen in popularity since then. I look forward to seeing where it goes. Uh, but everybody out there watching, I want you guys to follow me. It's your boy, Mikey T, the movie star. Follow me on Instagram, Mikey T underscore the movie star. Everybody that follows me based on this video, I'm going to follow y'all back. Um, drop a comment here with your IG. You know what I'm saying? So I can follow you all immediately. Let me send it over to my guy, Bond Simmons, the local legend. He's the rapper of the crew, y'all. Bonds, let them know where they can tap in with you. Bond Simmons, B-O-N-D-S, S-I-M-M-O-N-S. -S. That's Bond Simmons on all platforms, YouTube, music, videos. I just dropped the classic album, Local Legend. You know what I mean? TNR wear. A lot of things going on, man. The panel, get all the info. Tap in, follow me, man. I'm going to follow back, too. Peace and love. Salute to you, Bonds, man. Thank you for joining Salute. us tonight on the Hip Hop Panel Podcast. Sending it over to Rosewood, man. Back to the future vibes, man. Philly. You already know what it is, man. 
You know, it's your boy Rosewood, Spill Entertainment in the building. You can go on the gram, holler at me at spill underscore ENT, or go on the website, spillentertainment.com. You know, shout out to Swag 100 Podcast, you know, doing major things in the city. Shout out to members only Mondays, my guy Ace the Chemist, Missy Porter, doing real major things for all the up and coming artists in the city, really give them an outlet to do their thing, man. Shout out to 1122, our studio, come tap in, you know. Come holler at us, man. Y'all know what to do, man. Hit me up on the grand. Talk some business. Salute to the panel, man. Salute to my guy, Mikey T, Report Car Radio. SV Tour is my guy in the city with me. And you know the rapper from Southside, my guy, Byron Simmons, man. And as always, as always, SV Twizzy, send us out, brother. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. This SV Twiz, man, the hood blogger. Follow me on the gram underscore twist two one five man. Y'all now turned in to report card radio La Familia with my brother Mikey T the movie star. Bond Simmons in the building. True religion network. Y'all know how we carry it. An honorable earth up in this joint, man. One of Logan's finest, man. Y'all know how we carry it. It's only one way from here, y'all, and that's up. Let's get it. <laughs>